Okay, guys, we'll uh, just carry on so we can uh, get out not too late. Be up to Steve. Sorry. Guys, sorry. <laughs> Thank you very much. Right, okay, so Steve, take us downwind. Right, Richard, um, for those of you guys that don't know me, my name's Steve, and I'm a sail maker with more sails. So I'm going to quickly run through some, uh, some downwind stuff for you. Um, I did the same presentation last year, where I focused mainly on, uh, on sail shapes and what you're trying to achieve between uh, light air and heavy air. Uh, I'm going to just go briefly back over that and then uh, talk a little bit about what you should be trying to achieve on the boat as, as someone trimming the spinnaker. So obviously starting off here, this pretty much sums up downwind for me. Right, you've got four boats, all pretty, pretty evenly uh, matched for boat speed. Obviously, whoever sails the fastest is gonna gonna get to the bottom mark first. So sail controls. All right, we've got a number of sail controls that we can use for spinnakers: sheet, halyard, tack line, brace, <coughs> or guy as you call it here in Hong Kong, which controls the angle of the tack of the spinnaker pole. You have tweakers, and you have your pole height. Right, so less than 12 knots of true wind speed, which is pretty much what we sail in here in Hong Kong for 70% of the year. What you're trying to achieve with your sail shape is you're looking for a flatter overall flying shape, a tighter leading edge, nice and straight to allow the wind to get into the sail. And then we're looking for a nice big open leech here, which allows the wind to get out of the sail. So how do you achieve that flying shape? Well, it's pretty simple for genicas. You want your tack line on, nice and tight, hell it up, max hoist there, tweak her off, which will allow the leech of the sail to open up, as you can see here. Generally, you want to slightly over trim the sail. The reason for that is because you're sailing in light air, what you'll often find is that the breeze will drop slightly, the boat will still have momentum and then you'll start to, what we call, run over the sail. If you slightly over trim the sail, if that breeze doesn't drop and you've still got a bit of boat speed, you're not going to collapse the chute. And one thing you have to watch out for in light airs is beware of the light sheet. If you are trimming the sail and the sheet starts to go light, what you need to do is heat the boat up a little bit, create a little bit of extra apparent wind angle, and, and, and try and keep that load on the sheet. The spinnakers, pretty much the same thing, although you have slightly different controls to achieve it. You want your pole forward, as you can see here, right on the head stay, tweak her off, halley it full hoist, and beware of the light sheet. As you can see from the sail shape here, it's a nice straight leech, same as uh, Shoshaloza in the previous shot, and a nice big open leech there. And again, beware of the light sheet. <clears throat> okay, 12 knots plus. The reason why I've chosen 12 knots is because that's quite a standard crossover for Hong Kong. What we're looking for is a deeper flying shape, more luff curl, so generally slightly under trim the spinnaker, and a tighter leech profile, trying to make the spinnaker more sort of symmetric. <coughs> for genicas, <clears throat> you want your halyard at full hoist, tweak her on. Although these guys here in the blue aren't really using it, in the red sail they are. A little bit of luff curl, and beware the heavy sheet. Because you've got a bit more breeze, if you have a big load on the sheet, it generally means you're sailing too tight an angle. And you want to bear away just a little bit, try and keep that sheet nice and medium. A lot of people talk about here in Hong Kong, and, and most of the sailing guides that you'll get for Jenica's say ease the tack line up. I'm not a big fan of that myself. Personally I prefer to have the tack line down hard at all times. Occasionally you could try to do it if you were in a tactical situation where you wanted to run really really low. Maybe try and get inside another boat. You could look at easing the, the, the tack line up. But generally I, I would advise, advise against it. <clears throat> And is that the same whether you are, I mean, these are big boats, but the smaller boats yes. like Magic? Yep, Magic's, J80's, yep. anything with the Jenica. It's, it's the same concept because it's the same shape of sail. Obviously, 
obviously asymmetric. With the genica, what a lot of people don't realize is that the, the length of your bowsprit controls the balance of the boat. And when the guy designs the boat, what he does is he makes the length of the bowsprit at what he thinks is going to be a nicely balanced boat. So if you ease your tack line up like this uh, blue sail is doing here, effectively what you're doing is you're disturbing the balance of the boat. So you're creating an artificial situation. So it's okay if you have to do it for a short period of time, but generally I would say keep your tack line down. Most of the books you read will tell you that. <coughs> it's just my opinion. Okay, for spinnakers, obviously when the breeze starts to come up over 12 knots, you can square the pole back. You can raise the pole up. Ease the halyard out. I don't know if you can quite see it there, but just a blue spinnaker there, around about 200 millimeters. That'll just allow the sail to get away from the rig a little bit, get a little bit of separation between the rig and the, and the spinnaker. Tweak her on to try and create as a symmetrical flying profile as possible. A little bit of luff curl, same as the genica, and again, beware the heavy sheet. <coughs> okay. So the role of the trimmer. Trimming downwind, what I've noticed with a lot of people in Hong Kong is they tend to just, just hold the sheet. You, you go around the top mark, someone passes you the spinnaker sheet, and, and away you go and you get a little bit of curl and you sail down to the bottom mark. But really you have to be a bit more focused than that. If I was doing downwind trim on a boat, I'd be assessing the conditions all the way up the beat and deciding on which sail to use as I go around the top mark. Obviously some of the boats here you don't have the option of multiple sails, but just trying to assess basically what conditions you're going to be sailing in. As you approach the top mark, what you want to try and do is anticipate what the first 300 metres of your run are going to be like. Are you going to be going around in front of a bunch of people? In which case you maybe want to sail a little bit deeper to get away from them once you're on the mark. Are you at the back of the bunch? In which case you might want to sail a little bit hotter. And try and set the boat up accordingly before you hoist the sail. You can see a good shot down here. This spinnaker pole here is set a little bit higher. These guys here, they're set a little bit lower. So effectively what this guy's going to try and do as he goes around the mark is he's going to try and soak really deep really quickly to get inside the, the bunch that's just going around in front of him. And then what this guy here is going to do is he's going to try and sail a little bit hotter as he goes around the mark maybe get over the top of old mate down here. So that's really important. And as I said, that first 300 metres will define your run. If you go around the top mark, you have a <coughs> bad set, your spinnaker's not set for what you're trying to achieve on the boat, you're going to get rolled and lose places. Really important. Okay. So when you're sailing downwind, you hear everybody talk about it, it's in all the books, you see it on TV, it's about VMG running. Right? Does everyone know what VMG is? Okay, VMG is your velocity made good. It's in layman's, it's the best angle at the mark with the best boat speed. As a general rule of thumb, every single boat will sail at about 140 to 160 true wind angle, and usually at around about 7 to 8 knots of boat speed. So your role as a trimmer is to maximise your VMG, sailing downwind. How do you maximise VMG? Once you're sailing downwind, you've come around the top mark, what you want to do is sail slightly higher relative, and by relative I mean relative to other boats, to build up your boat speed. You can see here the blue spinnaker sailing about 5 degrees higher, maybe it's 8 degrees higher there, trying to build up his boat speed. As you sail higher, you hold that extra height until your boat speed starts to climb. And by climb I mean say 0 0.2, 0 0.3 increments of boat speed. So say 6.2, 6.4, 6.6. What you don't want to do is be sailing so high that your boat speed explodes. 6.5, 7, 7.5, 8. Because that generally means that your relative is too much. And you'll be losing ground in this guy. So heat it up a little bit, say 5, 8 degrees, build a parent, and what's really, really important is establish a heel angle. You can see this boat here, he's got a nice bit of heel angle there. 
And this guy here that's running a little bit deeper, deeper here also has a nice bit of heel angle. So it's really important. Build a parent, hold your heel angle. Okay, once you've done that first step, then you move into phase two, which is what we call rolling down or bleeding height. Once you've got your boat speed up, you've got a nice bit of heel angle on there, the boat feels lively and powered up. What you want to start to do is roll the boat down, bearing away about one, maybe two degrees every three to five seconds. And that just depends on the size of your boat. A smaller boat, you'll come down quicker over a shorter period of time. Bigger boat, you'll come down slower over a longer period of time. And the whole trick, while you're rolling away there, is try to hold that apparent wind angle forward. If you have a parent wind angle coming in like this, but you maintain your boat speed as you bear away, that apparent wind angle will stay forward, but you'll hold your boat speed. Effectively, what you'll end up doing, which the red spinnaker is doing a really nice job of here, is running deeper, but at the same speed. And the big thing you must watch out for as a trimmer is watch the boat speed at all times. As soon as the boat speed drops, starts to drop, then what you do is abort, reset and aggressively luff up and go back into that speed build mode that I was talking about just before. So it's three easy steps to maximise your VMG. Heat it up a little bit, build up a bit of boat speed, a nice bit of heel angle. Once you're happy there, start to roll it down. Working with the driver, trying to maintain that apparent wind angle, trying to hold that heel angle on the boat Keeping a close eye on the boat speed. As soon as your boat speed tanks, reset, do it again. Questions? Uh, how much of the steering speed should you do with crew boat? And how much? Uh, generally, I, I would say it's all with the rudder and, and the trim. Every time you're moving a person on the boat, every, every single step that a person makes on the boat just slightly disrupts the, the flow of the water over the hull of the boat. So I would, I would try to have everyone staying really calm, really still. Um, as you can see on this boat here, and the one in the background too actually, everyone's crouched down really low. And, 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 and try to really reduce that movement to an absolute bare minimum. So it's purely just helm. And, and obviously sheet tension. Okay, VMG on the racetrack. This, this is a great shot, and it, it, it pretty much explains exactly what I've, what I've just said. Volvo 70s, my favourite boat at the moment. Okay, and, and here you can see the, the, the boats all in, in different phases of that same mode that I was just talking about. Okay, here you have Camber in a slightly higher mode than Telefonica here. They're in that boat speed mode, right? And what they're trying to do is they're trying to create that extra apparent wind angle, that extra boat speed, that slightly more heel angle, so that they can then start to bear away as Telefonica, Puma, and the British are doing, and start sailing that slightly lower angle. You can see Sanya in the back here again. They're in, they're in the high speed build mode. And then the French way out the back here. Right, and they're falling into the trap of their low, the boat standing up straight, and they're, and, they're still, and, they're, and they're not really building up their apparent. You can really see it when you look at the heel angles of the boats. That's probably why they're coming last. <laughs> yep, there is a puff there too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so just very briefly. Old school. Sailing and sail making at the moment is changing so rapidly. Right? And, and, and you basically, you, you have an old school. I get people coming to me all the time talking about twisting the sail off the weather, projecting to windward, running the main out. I call it the 180 highway. 180 degree true wind angle, dead downwind, straight at the bottom mark. That, that's old school. The new school, what we're trying to achieve on the boats and what we're trying to achieve with that VMG running is straight luff sails, nice big open leech profile here, mains in, 
And what these guys are trying to do is they're trying to generate that apparent wind angle that we saw previously with the Volvos here. Again, you see it with the Volvos, straight luffs, open leech, mainsails in, nice and tight. How do we know it's the new school? Technology. What this shows you here is velocity magnitude over a sail. A pretty old sail, this is actually about 10 years old. You can tell because it's got a round top main, we don't make those anymore. And basically what you're looking for here is the yellows and the reds. What they indicate is they indicate greater wind speed over the sail. You can see the breeze coming in here, it's a fairly steady green, it accelerates over the sail. <coughs> we get your yellows and reds, and then coming off the back of the sail here, we get your lighter blues and your lighter greens. That shows slower air. What's really, really interesting, what I want you to take away from this tonight, is, is the way that the front edge of the sail is actually doing all the work. That's where your wind speed's at its greatest over the front edge of the sail. A lot of people look at a spinnaker, they think that the, what you're looking at, the bit facing the mast is doing all the work, it's not, it's the outside of the sail that's doing all the work. Okay, if we spin that same shot around again, this is from the port quarter of the boat, transom here looking forward to the bow here. Again, you can see how the wind going around the outside of the sail is doing all the work. And as the wind comes through the inside of the sail here, it's actually slowing down, which is creating drag, and juice drag they call that. And then coming through through the slot there. So again, you can see the mainsail in tight, nice big open leech profile, nice big slot there. And really trying to get that Air to run quickly around the front of the sail. That's that's really important. So why does curling enough improve performance in, in this situation? In the situation here, okay. Luff curl is basically just uh, uh, running a little bit deeper, effectively. It's the difference between say running 140 where you'd have a fairly straight luff and 150 where you'd have like a little bit more luff curl. So it's, it's, it's a trade-off. Well, what sort of true wing angle are you there? Uh, I would say... Demagnifier. <laughs> Demagnifier. <laughs> Off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, true wind angle. Have you got any information there? The, the, the reason I'm asking is, we keep talking about having a tight main. Yeah. So I'm interested in, in this relationship between what yep. sort of wind angle you're running I, and I, the main. Yep. Okay, I, I would agree. I would say this, this wind angle here, it looks to me like some sort of a sporty boat. Let's say they're running at 140 true wind angle. Um, but, but that doesn't necessarily mean that, that the guys out there in Imparters and stuff like that should be doing anything else. You know, you, you, see, you see them sailing every weekend, they have the main ride out, they have the spinnaker pole squared right back and they're running down that 180 highway, okay, it might, it might feel fast, but it's not actually as fast as the boat could go, right, and if they were to just drop that pole forward a little bit, build that apparent wind, bring the main in a little bit, and then start to, to, to get the depth that they can get with the sail, and you'll probably find that your VMG, your velocity may good over the whole leg, will actually improve. So, so this works for spinnaker and jetting? Yes, absolutely, across the board, yeah. So when you're running at, say, 150s to 160s, Mm -hmm. What about your main then? Are you still going to keep it in, or are you going to start? You, you will ease it out for sure, but you'll you'll still you wouldn't ease it out all the way out. You, you'll you still want something yeah, there. Exactly. You're pretty much trying to you're trying to find a nice nice happy balance between between what you're doing with the uh, with the spinnaker and what you're doing with the main. And, and, and by easing the main out, as you can see here, the the risk that you run is that you're going to shut down the flow, the flow over the sail. And, and, the, and the other thing with, with the main sail that you have to remember running downwind is that you're allowed to pump the main as well. So if you have the main slightly over trimmed, slightly in further than what you normally think, yeah. and you give it a good pump as you go down the wave, you can actually get a better return down that wave. Whereas if you have your main right out, 
and then you pump it in and then ease it out again, all you're doing is effectively shutting down the, the exhaust of the, of the Juniker. And, and twist in the main? Twist in the main. Uh, Are you trying in, to in the, in the very In the super light years, I would say yes. Yeah, in, in, in super light air, and, and Warwick touched a little, little bit on this, um, it used to be that you'd bring the boom up to the centre line. Well, these days they're now working on the, top, the, the first batten on the centre line, and you actually have the main traveller right up and lift it right up above the centre line. Certainly for a Jenica, for a, a yacht carrying a Jenica and say eight knots in the, the Typhoon series in June, I'd say have, have your traveller hard up, have your main right up to the centre line. To the centre line? Yep, absolutely. Even more so. So it's really creating an artificial feel to the sail when you're trying to trip the main into thinking that it's sailing at a much tighter angle than what it actually is. You're talking on the run there, aren't you? Running. You're all a bit confused. Old school. It's changing. Everything's changing. The way we look at and sailing is changing. You never sailed on one of these. I did, my dad's one. <laughs> yeah, that's just one now. You touch on pumping again, though. You're so, saying you yeah. have the main in, and when you pump, what are you yep. doing? You're letting it out and then bringing it back in? No, I'm holding it in. Now, just 32s were a, good, a great example. If, if you go on YouTube, you Google uh, now just 32, they carry the main in. Really, really tightly. Mm. See that one there, sort of max there. You know, you, you get the idea, right? What effectively they do with the main is, as they go down the down the wave, the guy's holding the main sheet. He'll pull the main sheet right in, even to weather, and then hold it there for 15 seconds until the boat accelerates. And then once the boat accelerates, then he'll slowly ease it out again, and then do the same thing again, really aggressively. And, and, and that's, that's a really good picture too because you know, you've got quite a confused sea state so there's real opportunity there. He's pumping the blue, I mean he's not, that's not his, his fixed main boom uh, position. No, I would say that's probably uh, pretty close to his fixed position, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, you don't know what he's trying to do on board technically, obviously he's got this boat here so he may be sort of trying to, trying to creep up and get around the front of this boat with the white spinnaker here. But as you can see right across the board, you know, these, these guys were all running 140, 145 wind angle here. And those mains are pretty much on, on, on the port quarter of the boat. It's not far off that JAT profile if you look from the back. You know, the kites are massive. Yeah. And so and that's doing the work. Right? Is, uh, you get great tricks off, off the Maldives guys. Because mm -hmm. the boats are very similar. In, in the way that you sail it and what you're trying to achieve. Just on that pumping, I was watching some JT Helmy in Spain on the weekend, and the helm there is holding the main the whole time down the wind, yep. pumping it out. Absolutely. Way. Yep, and, and straight through as well. So he's got the. He's basically holding. You, you'll have a strop coming off the boom. You can see the little nappy on the boom there. And he's basically holding the whole main sheet in one hand and literally. Just pumping it like that, even stepping up to weather. Is he coordinating with the, obviously not on the boat that size, but on a 515, coordinating with the spinnaker at the same time? Or? Yes, ideally that would be perfect. So effectively what you'll, you'll have is you'll have the, the, the spinnaker trimmer, that's us, and the main sheet guy pumping at the same time, and, and the helm also just sort of trying to hold a little bit of power on and try and, try and get that little bit of heel angle. Yeah, and then, and then you come away all together. Absolutely, yeah. And if you get really good at it, and you can actually have the crew moving, because you have your crew sitting along on the rail, if you can get your crew leaning in as you go into the pump and then leaning out again, <laughs> that's okay. So long as you're not actually physically moving on the boat, it's legal. Laterally, not forward. As long as you're sitting down, it's okay. <laughs> but you, can't have, you can't have guys running from side to side. They don't allow that. So that's it. So that's pretty much what the thinking is, certainly from the sail makers, of what, of what we're trying to achieve. And, and it applies to, uh, to all types of boats. You know, as, I, as I mentioned, the Impalas, whenever you're sailing, 515s, 
if you're racing TP52s, that's where we're going. And so just one last little bit before I close up. I know it's late. I know I love my old school, new school. Trimming. If you're the person trimming, try to find a natural, comfortable trimming position. This is off a Volvo 60, Caverna I think it is. He's right forward by the, by the shrouds there. Twisted round. Massive long piece of sheet. He's not really getting a lot of feel for that. He's separated from the crew, so he's probably not locking in what he's trying to achieve with the sail with the rest of the guys. In new school. There you go, you can see that's Dino there. He's driving, and the guy trimming is actually standing right behind him there. So they're a couple of metres apart. Exactly. Yeah, Dino's front of the stack in the T3. He was before they sold it. That's what they're trying to achieve. See, so he's there, the driver's there, the trimmer's there, your main trimmer is down here, and your tactician's there. So everyone's together, everyone's talking on the boat and trying to achieve the same thing. Poor Breeze, isn't it? <laughs> they had taken the gym down, so I would say that. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Quick question, do you say fly your spinning, your full sail up to flying 15s again yep. longer than you would previously we used to fill quite, quite often? Absolutely, yeah. Yep. This, is, this is sort of, this is quite a good picture for that. This is basically where the theory started with, was with this generation of TP, I think it was late 2008. The guys realized that, that by, leaving, by leaving the jib up, they were basically using it as a staysail. So what they were doing in 2006, 2007 is they'd run forward, take the jib down and put the staysail up. Mm. Some, some brainiac mm. said, well hang on a minute, why don't we just leave the jib up and use that? Which is effectively what they've done. So yeah, definitely it's something that that is still fairly new and, and you're still really only seeing it on the big race boats, but for J80s, Flying 15s, certainly, you know, it's certainly something you should be thinking about and looking at. Probably more on a reach as, as opposed to a, a genuine run, but, but definitely, definitely food for thought. And as you can see here, this is actually, they're actually still flying this jib when they're, when they're running spinnaker poles. So it's, it's pre, uh, pre when they changed the rule and, and changed to uh, bow spritz. So now, with the bowsprit, the, the tack of the sail is actually out here, and you can, you can see the sail starts to curve back into the end of the, uh, the end of the spinnaker pole there. So even more so now, and again, to come back to the J80s, this is a classic example, J80 bowsprit, it's a very long bowsprit. You've got a lot of separation between the luff of the sail and, and, and the rig. So you do have room in there for, for an extra sail. <laughs> Easy, right? <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, Steve? Well, it gets off quite lightly. <laughs> gave us too much to think about. <laughs> so, uh, generally, yes. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's a general rule, but. <laughs> but not so much so like when you take like um, if you go back to if I go there change the sales. Um, I mean, like, we do a lot of weapon design sale in here in Hong Kong. So you are restricted by the by the type of sale that you can you can use and stuff like that. And this is a classic example. Somewhere in Denmark. Um, you know, probably a one design sail there. Um, that sail would be more of an AP sail, so he has to use it for, for running, but, but he also has to use it for reaching. So what he's really trying to do there with his controls is just manipulate the shape of the sail. Just anything to get, to get that, uh, that luff straight down there for the light air and get that big open leech. You can tell this is a one design sail because if it was an IRC sail, it would probably be much lower cut. It's only a fractional sail, it's not quite a high cut glue, so it's probably restricted on, on what area you can be using.
So did he, did he say light wind the the, the luff bolt down? Yeah. Just to try and get the, the edge of the sail straight. Just wind here, lift the bolt. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's yep, absolutely. So this is light air here, and you, you've got a nice sort of straight luff there. And then when you get into windy uh, ears here, it's probably the red sail is the one doing the best out of this bunch, the far 40s I think. It has got a lot more curve in the sail there. Pole's a little bit higher. Yeah. And, and what about, I mean, they're running down in there, what about if they're going, reaching really hard? If, if they are really hard reaching, uh, then again, you'd probably, you'd, you'd come back to, come back to your light air setting. Even if there's a bit of breeze? Even if there's a bit of breeze, yeah. So you like the, the reason down. why you're sailing with this sort of setup in lighter airs is because the boat speed relative to the wind speed is much closer, so effectively your apparent wind angle is much further forward. So that, that, this sort of setting, this this this, this tight laugh also works in, in bigger breeze when you're sailing hotter angles when you're reaching hard. <coughs> this sort of comes back to, to our uh, VMG running. What we're trying to achieve here with the VNG sailing. No head sail up here. No. No head sail there, but it does look to me like these boats might have overlapping head You can see here, this head sail goes quite a long way back. Generally, the head sail only works if you've got a non overlapping jib. If you have an overlapping head sail, obviously it's just too much sail in front of the uh, spinnaker, so you just punch a wind off it. Certainly look like displacement boats to me. Thank you very much, Steve. Cool.